Hey there guys, TechNinja117 here, and we're back with part 2 of the BuildCraft 3x tutorial. Um, in this, uh, this one, we're going to be covering um, engines, we're going to be covering machines, um, and uh, that's really about it, engines and machines. Uh, that's a lot to cover though. Um, it takes up a lot of space too, so I guess without further ado, uh, clock is running, so let's go on ahead and uh, get this taken care of, I guess, here. Alrighty, so I guess first off here we're going to do engines, because uh, all the machines do require power, so I guess this is a pretty good way to sh or a place to start. Um, so first off, we're going to start out with your simple redstone engine. Um, I say it's made just like this here. I say it's three wood, one glass, two wood gears, and one piston. Um, the only thing I have not shown how to do in this uh, thing here is uh, how to make gears. What it is is just four sticks arranged around that way. Um, the gears you do need to stage up, so as you can see the use for wood gear here, you can turn into a stone gear. Turn that stone gear here into an iron gear with four iron ingots. Turn the iron gear into a gold gear with four gold ingots. And turn the gold gear all the way into a diamond gear with four diamonds added onto that as well. So as you can see, the diamond gear um, and the higher tier gears do get a little expensive. Um, <clears throat> anyway, this one here is just activated with a redstone signal and produce one Minecraft jewel per second, um, which is not a whole lot of energy, but it's just fine to, uh, say, pull things out of a chest or pump uh, pump water. Um, and if you recall, this is what I was using in the other part of the tutorial over here, or uh, the uh, mod spotlight here, to pull the items out of the chest um, for my pipe spotlight. Um, other than that, the next engine is the Sterling engine now. It's been renamed. The way to fuel that is pretty much whatever you can put into a furnace um, in, uh, in uh, normal Minecraft, in vanilla Minecraft. So you can use coal, you can use lava, you can use wood. Um, all of them do have different burn lengths um, and all produce one Minecraft jewel per tick. And as you know, there are 20 ticks in one second in Minecraft. So this produces um, 20 times the energy of that engine. Um, all energy is expelled when the um, as you can see, this engine's running over here. All energy is expelled when the little ring hits the top. Uh, we'll get to that engine in a second and why it's sitting there running. Um, you make the Sterling engine with three cobblestone, one glass, one piston, and two stone gears. Um, so it's not exactly that expensive, um, and it does consume um, things rather quickly to run. Um, it does uh, run the same length as a generator, or uh, not a generator, but a furnace. Um, and then we have the combustion engine, which is the big daddy of all the engines in BuildCraft. Um, there's three different ways to fuel it. Lava will produce one Minecraft jewel per tick for a total of 20,000 Minecraft jewels, um, which is pretty much the same as the Sterling engine. Um, one bucket of oil will produce three Minecraft jewels per tick for a total of 20,000 Minecraft jewels. Um, so that's a <clears throat> little bit better there. They did just buff that in the latest release. Um, it's in the release notes on uh, Cov uh, Singear's uh, GitHub. Um, I say, and the fuel, you can use a bucket of fuel to power it for six Minecraft jewels per tick for a total of 100,000 Minecraft jewels, which is actually pretty fantastic. Um, so this thing is really going to be the backbone, the bulk of your power production. Um, there is a little caveat to that, though. Um, first, let's go over the recipe, though. So it's crafted with three iron ingots, two iron gears, one piston, and one glass. Um, as you can see um, here, let me. Uh, the redstone engine doesn't have an interface. The Sterling engine does have uh, where you can put in your fuel, and the combustion engine has an interface where you can see two liquid tanks here. And this liquid tank here is for fuel, and this liquid tank is for water for cooling. Um, these engines do need to be cooled. They will eat a very, very good amount of water um, once they get up to temperature. Um, as you can see, all these engines are blue. That's their cool state. Talk a little bit about engine temperature now. Um, you come on over here to this engine. As you can see, it's flashing between orange and red. Now, if this was a combustion engine, this engine would explode in about another five seconds, um, causing a massive crater. Uh, and uh, that's not necessarily something you want, especially because, you know, it's probably going to damage other engines or blocks or it's going to blow up your room. I had a refinery that was chunk glitching at one point and totally blew the hell out of it like three times. Lost so much materials in that. But, um, anywho, uh, this is the, the red stage is the, oh my god, it's going to explode stage. Then there's this orange stage that is flashing between right here, which is the I'm above operating temperature, help me. Um, if I turn this engine off, it's going to cool down through the stages. I figured this would be a lot easier than letting it warm up through them, um, and a lot quicker, too. Um, so you see it's just a solid orange. That means it's slightly overheat. 
and there's the green, which means to set optimal engine op operating temperature. And then the blue is the cool state. Um, so these engines do need to build up um, <coughs> power to essentially run more efficiently as what it is. Um, now all these quoted things here are produced in the green state um, that I just told you up on this board. So the green state is the uh, the temperature range that the engine is supposed to be operating in. Um, so what this will do is it will take in water and keep this engine at that green state. So it won't let it get to that orange state, um, but it will take um, a very, very good amount of water. I'll show you a cooling system I have set up over there a little later in the video. And then one thing I neglected to show a recipe for in the last um, spotlight was the wrench that I was using to uh, you know, bat around that uh, um, that uh, the iron pipes over there. It's one stone gear and three iron ingots in a Y pattern like that. And you can use that wrench to here. Let me give myself a couple pipes. You can use that wrench to reorient engines as well. Gotta hate it when you press R or resource your inventory in the FTB pack. So as you can see, I can cycle this one between all the available inputs. So if there were three machines, I could use this engine like that, or the three wood pipes like so. So that's that's the fun little thing there. Okay, so now that I've spent six minutes talking about engines, uh, it is time to move on to the machines, so the goodies over here. Um, we're going to pass this one up for right now, because it requires this to work. Um, and this one is the newly revamped architect table. Now, as you can see, there's a place to put a um, blueprint or a template, and there's, uh, you know, then it spits it out over here. The other cool thing is you can name whatever it is. So, first off, you're going to need to get yourself either a blueprint, which is a piece of lapis surrounded by paper, or a template, which is a piece of, uh, which is ink sack surrounded by paper. And I do have two sitting in this chest over here for me. I'm going to make two, um, two different uh, plans for this. And the auto crafting, oh, I didn't actually set the recipe for this. Wow, there's preparedness for you. <laughs> so the architect table is crafted using two ink sacks, one landmark, I'll show you how to get that in a second, uh, one crafting table, two dandelion yellow, one template, and two diamond gears. It is very expensive, but when you see what it can do, um, you'll see why. So as you can see here, I have this section of wall that I built previously, highlighted in... Oops. Gonna have to edit that one out. Um, but this uh, section of wall um, here highlighted um, in the landmarks little lasers here. And I can put in the blueprint, and it's gonna start writing it. I can name this, I'll name this BC3 wall blue for the blueprint and then I'm also going to make a template of it and this will just be BC3 wall template so it takes a little bit doesn't require any power to actually write the template or the blueprint so um, the cool thing that you can do um, I know in previous versions of buildcraft you could not transport say like you built a great power plant in your test world you couldn't then port that over into your main world um, but now you can actually so what I can do is take this blueprint and put it right in here and it's going to take it and transfer this Actually, do I need to put it down the bottom? I think I may need to put it down the bottom. Oh, never mind. <laughs> wow, okay, I think I may have broken it. Oh, no, okay, there we are. BC3 wall blue. I don't know what exactly it, it was doing, but uh, um, it went over to another page for some reason. Okay, but uh, there's BC3 wall blue, and I just wrote that back to my blueprint. I don't think you can do the same thing with templates, but we'll see. If you may be able to, you may not be able to. I go back over. Yep, actually you can. BC3 wall template. So you can input any blueprint into this and then extract it in a later date and in a different world, which is great. So if I wanted to, say, take this wall and use it in my survival let's play, um, I could then just build another one of these over in that world and then extract the blueprint. And how you make this, by the way, is a bookshelf surrounded by blueprints, which actually is not very expensive at all, and uh, just for the functionality it provides is absolutely wonderful. Um, so let's go on ahead and move on over to this over here. Now I'm going to show you another machine, um, and we're going to use the template in this. Uh, this is called the Buildcraft Builder. 
Um, let me get this cobblestone out here. Now, you're probably wondering why I made two plans of that, but uh, all will be explained in short order. All right, so there's the builder plunk down, and if I go on ahead and I put in this template, it's going to be able to build the wall. Now, this is the way we're used to a builder working. It's just going to put down whatever block um, that we had originally. So you can see it's going to... Oh, I deleted one of my combustion engines on accident. <laughs> oh, well. So, um, actually, give me one second. And actually, don't do that, because uh, as you can kind of notice from the jump cut, uh, nothing's happened here. It's only one engine, and uh, my game crashed and corrupted the world. If you guys are watching my feed um, on YouTube, uh, yeah, it totally messed everything up. So um, <clears throat> I had to actually go into MC Edit, delete the builder, and uh, you can see what MC Edit did to my other spotlight area. Like these were all pipes and everything, so it kind of kind of killed it. So I went and uh, rebuilt everything, and uh, we're going to continue on. Um, but we're going to skip the rest of the builder stuff right now and come back to it at the end of the video, just in case it decides to blow up my world again. At least I got something for you guys. Um, <clears throat> so moving right along, we're going to go over to the uh, to this uh, thing over here. And you guys are probably thinking, oh god, he's totally lost his marbles and put down an Industrial Craft 2 machine. Well, that's not what I'm highlighting. I'm highlighting this. This is the hopper from BuildCraft. Um, I say it's a very handy thing. I say it's crafted using five iron ingots, a stone gear, and a chest. And uh, no longer do you have to worry um, if your machines are full and the pipes are going to bounce stuff out, because now you can feed multiple items into the hopper on top, and the hopper is going to insert them one by one into whatever machine or inventory is on the bottom of the hopper. So as you can see, I put cobblestone and iron ore in here, and the iron ore didn't bounce out. If I had pipes leading in here, it would still be able to fill um, <clears throat> all that uh, fun stuff there. So that's uh, actually a very wonderful addition to uh, Buildcraft 3 that I really like a lot. I was, I was waiting for that for a while. Um, next off, uh, we have Buildcraft, uh, Buildcraft's automatic crafting option here. Now, say so what I'm going to be doing is making um, water cells with this. So you can see I got a water bucket and an empty cell makes a water cell. And the auto crafting table is made with a crafting table and four wooden gears um, that I showed how to make earlier. So let's uh, go ahead and turn this bad boy on. And okay, so you're going to see the cells are going to come into the top. And the crafting table, I guess, while, while we're waiting for the cells to come in, will either um, accept items put directly into it, or um, items that are any in inventory adjacent to it. So like this chest here, this is where all my water buckets are. So the cells are going to come on in, and they're going to stack up on top of this one. And um, you need some sort of thing to pull things out of this table. So I have another wooden pipe rigged up, and actually it's the wrong way. So as you can see, the uh, the wooden pipe needs to, the darkened side needs to be around the inventory it's pulling from. So if it was this way, it would try to pull stuff from this empty chest and put it in there. So we're just going to go ahead and flip it back around. And when it pulses, it's going to pull out a water cell. So as you can see, there's a water cell coming out. <clears throat> and it will do that as long as it's being supplied with cells and water buckets. And you can see it's returning the empty water buckets back to this chest as well. Um, so essentially, the satellite method like this um, is handy for things that don't stack, like water buckets and things like that. So, Okay, so moving on, we're going to go on ahead to the Buildcraft Pump, which is actually um, the method you're going to use to get all of your water um, and everything like that. Uh, water, oil, any liquid, really. Um, it's uh, crafted by taking a mining well, which I'll go over in just one second, and putting a tank on top of it. You can see one of the pumps. You simply put it over any source block of water, oil, whatever liquid, and it will drop its little thing down into it here. And uh, you simply apply a power. One Starling engine like that will, um, uh, will fully power it. So as you can see, it's pulling the source blocks up out of this infinite water source I made here and is putting them into the gold pipe and right into the tank. So uh, things like that are very handy for uh, oil collection or um, cooling systems. Uh, just uh, there's, there's them, the uses are endless, let's put it that way. Um, I mean, you know, especially now with the new liquid API in Forge uh, where you can uh, um, place down honey and things like that. Um, so that should be coming out soon. So that'd be really interesting having a buildcraft system picking up liquid honey and all sorts of fun stuff. I don't know. I'm just uh, I'm just really kind of getting excited for that. <laughs> Alrighty. So I guess I'll show you what the mining wall is crafted like now. And that's this lovely thing on top of the stack of dirt. First off, let me go ahead and flip out my engines. 
<clears throat> and the mining well is crafted with six iron ingots, an iron gear, an iron pick, and a piece of redstone. And that's going to go on ahead and give you that lovely block right up there. It doesn't have a GUI, and uh, I actually do need some pipe really quick. Some conductive pipe, so I can go ahead and hook this up so you can see it in action. There we go. Should be getting power soon. There we go, and as you can see, it just mines straight down. <laughs> mines straight down and puts any blocks it finds. Oh, that's right, I filled the hole that it made with lapis, because uh, it... Uh, when I recorded the last time, it uh, totally messed up, but uh, as you can see, it's mining down to the bottom of the world, um, and uh, fills up the lapis there in an adjacent inventory, or it can spit it out into a pipe, or it just rockets it out into the air if you have nothing uh, nothing attached to it, which I guess I will show you at the quarry, just because I think uh, think it's interesting. But uh, let me get a piece of pipe to fix that once, I, uh, once I'm done playing. Um, so this is the quarry, right here. And when you place it down, it has a default, um, was it 9x9 nine nine radius, I think? So a uh, little shout out to the dire wolf there, apparently. Um, but uh, as you can see, the little builder is going to go ahead and build the quarry frame. And as soon as the frame is done building, an arm will drop down and start mining the blocks um, all the way down to bedrock. Um, it will not mine bedrock, and it will not mine lava or any blocks under lava. So um, that's why I tend to put my quarries out in the middle of water, um, because uh, it, it, it'll deal with all lava, then it just mines a massive amount of obsidian, and, uh, you know, that's always handy. Um, so let's just wait for the arm to go down. I'll show you the items rocketing out of the top of this. <clears throat> As soon as it said, wow, that's actually pretty deep already. Then again, it is getting powered by... There we go. There's the items popping out the top. Now, if the pipe wasn't there, there we go. Now you can see them shoot out the top. I just wanted to see that. That's a pretty neat effect. Um, and then, like I said, you can output items directly into a piping system. No redstone engine or anything required. So there they go, flying out of there. A quarry um, is a very... Like, I mean, this seems kind of broken and overpowered, but it's a very, very expensive machine. Um, wow, I didn't need to put that pipe there. Um, but uh, it's crafted with two diamond gears two gold gears, three iron gears, a redstone, and a diamond pickaxe. So if you just look at that in terms of diamond cost, that's 11 diamonds to have your mining become the easiest thing in the face of the planet. Um, now, I did mention default size. You can alter this with uh, landmarks to get it to be different sizes. And I guess let me show you how to, uh, how to do that really quick. So I have this house over here. It's surrounded by the landmarks here. As you can see, there's one there, one there, one up top, and let's see, one over here. So if I were to go on ahead and right click on the one that intersects all of them, just like that, it'll create a box around the house. And if you place like your quarry or your architect table, uh, fillers, uh, really anything will do this. Um, you right click right next to one of the landmarks and it will go on ahead and put the stripes around it. That's exactly you saw the stripes when the quarry was placed. The stripes will follow wherever those landmarks are. Um, uh, landmarks, I'm pretty sure I didn't go over before I crashed, um, are made with a redstone torch with a piece of lapis on top of it. And uh, another interesting bit of functionality with the landmarks, if you take them, place them down, and get a lever, this is just kind of an impromptu thing, totally wasn't planning on doing this, and give them redstone power, they will shoot out a blue laser 64 blocks in each direction, so you can make sure you line them up properly. Landmarks will only work if they are lined up properly, so the other landmark has to be on one of these lines for it to find it and then put the red box around like I showed. Um, so, uh, let's go on back over this way. I have a couple more machines to talk about before I get back to the builders. I'm, I'm really tempted to do the builders because I really like the functionality that was added, but, uh, but like I said, I'll get back to those in a second. I must say, these are the refineries. Now, with these refineries, you can do things like refining oil into fuel. Um, there was an oil well over there. I'll put it up a picture on my screen so you can see what a normal one genning in a world looks like. I did take a screenshot of it before I pumped it all to uh, Kingdom Come uh, and into this tank, which is not from Buildcraft. But uh, as you can see, the refineries over here are taking in the oil and outputting um, fuel. Now, um, these can be used uh, in vanilla build craft for all that. Also, um, they do have an API, um, so you can actually use, uh, use these for things like forestry, um, other mods as well, which is very handy. And as you can see, I've set this one to only accept oil in the rear tanks and output fuel. Um, I think, yeah, okay, this one's empty, so I could show you. And if you take a bucket of oil, a couple buckets of oil, um, you can set whatever recipe you want in here. 
Now to clear it, you just simply left click, and like I said, and that will make sure it only accepts oil in the two rear tanks. Because I uh, know sometimes you get the fuel backup going on back into the back tanks, that would always annoy me. Um, but uh, that's one way to prevent it. And the refineries, um, do uh, you want to make sure you refine all of your oil. Um, because uh, as, as you could see with the engines previously covered, it provides such a stupid fuel gain. Um, it, it's definitely worth it. Um, it it's just, it, it's, you're silly. Let's put it that way. You're silly if you're going to be using your oil unrefined. Um, they're a little expensive to make, though. It does take four diamonds uh, for one diamond gear, three tanks, and two redstone torches, but definitely, definitely worth it. I'm going to have to set the time to dawn really quick, so that way I'm not doing this in the dark. And we'll follow my lovely blue line uh, over here to the fillers, which is another very, very handy tool. Um, the fillers um, have several different patterns, and they're just going to... Um, essentially fill whatever space you designate um, with whatever you tell them to fill. Um, so uh, they're crafted with two ink sacks, two dandelion yellow, two gold gears, a chest, a crafting table, and a landmark. Um, and these are the different recipes here. So this one is going to fill an area with whatever blocks you put in the filling resources here. This one is going to clear an area um, and so it's going to take out, like, I mean, say there's that pesky mountain that's over there that you really don't like. You can just totally take it out uh, with this, as long as it's, you know, 64 by 64. Um, there's stairs, which will create um, a, a stair pattern up wherever you, uh, you have designated um, with whatever you put in here. There's a box, which is handy for building rooms. Um, it'll make, uh, you know, um, a floor, t walls, and a roof on everything. There's flatten, which is also, I guess, handy. Say, uh, you know, you got a plane that you want to put your factory on. Um, it's designate an area that you want flattened, and uh, it'll go on ahead and do that for you. And then there is a pyramid pattern as well. So it'll build like a uh, like a Mayan step pyramid um, wherever in an area that you have designated as well. So um, I'm going to have to come back to demonstrate the filler because I was going to demonstrate the filler on something that I'm going to be building with the builder. Um, so we'll come back to that in one moment. And then the last two machines are really the uh, the Buildcraft uh, 3 advanced um, crafting things. Um, well, three machines, really. Um, you have your laser, which is going to power both the next two items, which is two obsidian, two diamonds, and five redstone. Uh, actually, a really expensive thing, but uh, really takes you to kind of like the Tech 3 level in Buildcraft. Then you have your assembly table. And let's see, okay, now my stuff stuff's over here. Let me grab that, because uh, when everything got corrupted, these got deleted, and i got to make sure I get everything back in the proper place. Um, so the assembly table is crafted with one diamond gear, one diamond, a redstone, and six obsidian. And this is going to make all of your logic gates, um, all your, uh, your facades. Um, I didn't really mention anything about facades, but as you can see, I have a pipe coming right out of the ground here, like a Red Power 2 cover, which is awesome. And uh, these are the facades. They attach directly to the uh, to the pipes. So um, if I would put, uh, let's see, some cobblestone in here with a cobblestone structure pipe. Let's see, I just got to grab one of those. This is what the structure pipe's for, by the way. Let's see, that's not going to do it. Give me one second. Let me actually make, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Oops. Oh, it's three cobblestone structure pipes. That's what it is. Okay, that's right. I totally forgot it makes six. So you need three cobblestone structure pipes on the recipe. So this here um, will start up, and uh, the laser should be powering up at any point now, because this has some work to do. Oh, no, wait, now you have to select it. There you go. And now you see the lasers are powering up, and they're going to make my cobblestone facades. So this is how these uh, these two tables work. You see it's this uh, dancing, joyous harmony of... Uh, all this lasery goodness going down into this table. And uh, this will spit out into uh, piping networks or adjacent inventories like this chest over here. Um, I will go over the recipes for all the uh, logic things in the next episode, because that's the logic episode. Um, and it uh, kind of be pointless to be doing them now. So you can see I cleared that all out and uh, outputted it into actually this over here, because this is an adjacent inventory. And uh, this is essentially Buildcraft's Tech 3 um, auto crafting table. Um, so if you went and said wanted to make a furnace and set that all in there, it would <clears throat> go on ahead and make furnaces at a rapid pace with whatever you have in here. And uh, let's see, it just puts them into this inventory here. And for the auto crafting table, totally messed that up too. 
and that's the advanced crafting table, by the way. I keep on saying auto crafter, but it's uh, six obsidian, a crafting table, a chest, and a redstone chip set. Uh, the redstone chip set is made by putting a piece of redstone into your assembly table and selecting it, and then, like I said, it just spits out redstone chip sets. So that's that, and I guess now it's time for the dreaded moment where I'm going to have to go back and attempt to do the builder stuff. So let me go on ahead and do that, I guess. Just fly on over here. And uh, let's see, I don't have any of my templates on me because everything crashed. So we're going to use the template thing here. That's right, I'm looking for a blueprint, actually. Go ahead and do that in there, and we're going to pull out the wall blueprint. Now, see, it wasn't that nice. We can actually demonstrate this for real, because <laughs> I had to set a blank blueprint. This is now the blueprint for the wall. And the other really neat thing, I'm going to have to blow up this builder really quick, is the path mark. Now, this is really awesome. I'm very happy they added this, and it makes wall building really easy. So you see a path marker is crafted with a redstone, and, or with a redstone torch and a piece of cactus green. Now, if I were just to plunk down the builder, it would make one piece of wall and then stop. Now, if I were to do this and place down some path markers here, say I want the wall to come that way and then come down this way a little bit, and then right click on one of them. I'm just going to use this one that's closest here. You see, it's finding its buddies. I think you have to link all of them together like this. So you see it goes on ahead and finds its buddies. It will find them on elevation changes. So if I were to go and then make another one up here, it would be able to find that because it does have a search pattern to it. So unlike the landmarks, they will find each other on a varying path. Oh look, both my trees grew um, that I think were engines before. Um, so now if I went and plunked down the builder here, if I'm not handling like I'm drunk, It'll go on ahead, pop off all the path markers. You see the red laser is still here. And it will go on ahead if I feed it the proper items. Feed it the proper items here and the template. And hopefully this doesn't crash. Go! Alright, see it's going to blow up my... Uh, previous stuff. Oh, you know why? <laughs> okay, that's right, because this actually does the wall relative to where you placed this. So since I placed this going this way, it's going to build the wall this way, like just like this, in sequence. So as you watch here, just watch and laugh at my fail, because it's going to go on ahead and build the wall here. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. Well, hey, you know what? Uh, definitely lesson learned. Uh, <laughs> but it will it will place the torches on it. We'll place everything. As you can see, the uh, the uh, blueprint is making it place the exact blocks uh, where they were. So it's got the ladders going on, the torch there, and you'll see it place the stone slabs on the top of the wall. So this is going to be a very defensible wall. It's just going to be kind of mildly annoying to attackers. Um, so it's going to start clearing out more stuff, and I want to make sure it's not going to blow up my filler because I'm going to use the filler. Um, to get rid of this mess. Actually, at this point, I'm not going to use the filler to get rid of this mess, so give me one second. But as you see, it's going ahead and putting the wall down on that uh, on that azimuth there. So, really quick, um, I'm going to fill an area so that way the filler can get rid of it, and I'll be right back. <clears throat> Actually, I've decided I wanted to show setting this up. Because if I do it this way, I can show, like, the pyramid plan or something, too. So, if I do it that... Am I not on mark here? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. So you see, uh, like I said, the uh, landmarks will not find each other if they're not directly on. There we go. I have a small space. And uh, let's go ahead and plunk down the filler I have waiting over here. Uh, with glass, I got the filler. Coming in there. I say I do need some bricks. Cause like I said, this is totally impromptu. Because <laughs> I messed that up. So let's see, we got bricks. We're going to make this, actually, we'll make this into a pyramid pattern. And uh, we're going to make a pyramid out of cobblestone. That sounds like a fun plan. I love pyramids. 
All right, see, it's going to just place blocks down. Oh, but I totally forgot to give it a height. This is why it's important to make sure you're not an idiot before doing things like this. Okay, so now we'll give it height. Do that there. Do that there. That there. And that there. We'll break the filler one more time. Place the new one down. Oops. Failing again. Make sure you select your landmarks. What's the big hairy deal now? I forgot this one, because I'm a derp. Ah, oh, that's right. So there's the one. I seem to have broken build craft. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. After a quick relog, um, lasers are gone. And now I can actually do this and not be a complete idiot. So if I... Whoops. Yeah, this is me being silly. Um, if I were to go on ahead and right-click on that right there, it'll go on ahead and give me an actual box now, because you do need a box for the filler. Uh, if you do it 2D, it'll just make a flat thing. Um, so, okay, there we go. Now the fillers drop down, and now I can do a pyramid out of it. And just for fun, let me make it out of bricks, because I have a load of them. So there it goes. It's going to fill in the rest of everything with the bricks and make a pyramid out of it. And you see it didn't fill this in over here because this landmark didn't pop off because it was an extra landmark. But there's a nice little step pyramid there now. And if I were to go on ahead now and instead tell it to clear the area, it'll go on ahead and get rid of all the blocks in rapid sequence. I used a filler to make this area that I'm doing the spotlight in. As you can see on, on uh, the mini-map up in the corner, um, it is kind of just a gigantic square out in the middle of water. Um, so that's, uh, that's what I use that for. Other than that, uh, guys, I hope you did enjoy the video and all my last second derping on this because I did this out of sequence. Um, so if you did uh, enjoy the video, please do subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, and leave a comment if you think uh, I'm doing something a little funny. And uh, then <clears throat> I will catch you around for part three of the Buildcraft 3X tutorial um, slash mod spotlight, uh, which is going to be covering logic and gates. Um, so uh, I guess, guys, until then, have fun and good creep.